What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, the Bad Data Dizzle, back with another New York Giants video. Do me a favor, guys. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do me the honor. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you ring the bell notification. That way you know when I go live or do a video like this. Also hit that thumbs up button if you don't mind. That does help out the video quite a bit. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Links are in the description below. Hope you guys will follow me. I will follow you back. Really trying to grow my IG or the gram as the kids call it. So if you can follow me on Instagram more than anything, that'd be great. And like I said, I will follow you back. I'll be live tonight at 10 o'clock with the one and only Cop Pizzle. That's right. The Dizzle and the Pizzle live tonight, 10 o'clock. Make sure you guys tune in for that. You ain't going to want to miss it. Bring your questions, of course. I'm sure we'll talk about Daniel Jones. It's been a hot topic this week. You're welcome. Anyway... Let's get into the meat and potatoes of the video. I want to talk about Odell Beckham, the trade that was between the New York Giants and the Cleveland Browns. Obviously, with the Cleveland Browns coming in to MetLife Stadium, there was a lot of anticipation about Odell Beckham's return to MetLife. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen because he tore his ACL, so we will not see old friend Odell Beckham uh, facing our New York Giants. And, you know, without the whole pandemic thing, this was the game that the content creators were going to get together and go to uh would have been pretty amazing since there's supposed to be a massive snowstorm down there would have been kind of interesting to see how the weather would have played out anyway it's not happening anyway so it doesn't matter you know Odell Beckham came out of LSU not a lot of fanfare I don't remember a lot of people making a big deal about Odell Beckham when he was drafted I can remember saying why are we drafting another five foot 11 185 pound guy we need a big receiver we need defense I mean we have all these guys every guy we have is five foot 10 185 pounds Nordell Beckham got off to a bit of a slow start with the Giants because he injured his hamstring. He didn't play his first four games. But ever since he came into you know the league, he made an immediate impact. I'm pretty sure it was against the Falcons. He had a big touchdown catch, and you know his rookie season was phenomenal. He was superhuman. He was supernatural his first three years in the NFL. And, of course, his signature was the incredible catch against the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday night football. I mean, who could forget that catch? Of course, the Giants lost the game, but he was amazing. He always had his little quirks. We kind of put up with that because Odell Beckham was one of the most electrifying players you'd ever seen. Every Giants fan was sitting there going, throw the ball to Beckham, throw the ball to Beckham. We just wanted to see what Beckham could do with the ball. He was unbelievable. He was a lot of exciting. He was he was excitement personified. He was fun. He lit up the city like his hair. His hair was crazy. He was crazy. And he was a lot of fun to watch. There's no denying the man's talent. He was unbelievable. He could have been the best receiver in football in his prime. 2015, he got in the little thing with Josh Norman. He got in his head a little bit. He got suspended for that. He started fighting with the field goal net, the boat trip, and all this stuff started to take a toll on the New York Giants. Now, Odell Beckham's first three years in the league, he had 288 receptions, 4,122 yards receiving, 35 touchdowns. Incredible. He was on record paces for a lot of these statistics his first three seasons. 2017, Odell Beckham hurt his ankle ironically enough, against Cleveland in the preseason. And I can remember saying in 2017, the very beginning of the year after we lost to Dallas, that we should trade Odell Beckham. A lot of people killed me for that video, just like they kind of did with the Saquon Barkley video, but I digress. I just figured that the Giants had so many holes that they needed to put that money elsewhere. Of course, Beckham did play the entire, uh, he played part of the 2017 season before he ultimately had to have ankle surgery and he missed most of the year. He came back in 2018, and he had a pretty good year. You know, he had over 1,000 yards receiving again, even though he did miss the last four games with a quad contusion. So Odell Beckham obviously began to wear out his welcome. Dave Gettleman signed him to a five-year, $95 million deal, saying we don't give up on talent, and we didn't sign him to trade him. Well, we all know that Dave Gettleman was lying, and the fact that Dave Gettleman signed him was just so that they could trade him and it gave him more leverage. In a video I did in March of 2018, I said the New York Giants should trade Odell Beckham to Cleveland. as that is exactly where he ended up. You know, Odell Beckham uh, you know, went to Cleveland, and he said the Giants sent him there to die. Now, he's in a better situation. The Cleveland Browns are a much better football team than we are at this juncture. They're 9-4. and four, We're 5-8. and eight, And they have a very good young core of players. Baker Mayfield, their offensive line is very good. Nick Chubb is very good. And, and that's just a really good team. We're going to have our hands full on Sunday night. There's no doubt about it. But ever since Beckham's first three years in the league, his last four years in the league, He's on 199 receptions, 2,708 receiving yards, and only 16 touchdowns in the last four years. Let's just put it this way. Darius Slayton, as a rookie last season in nine games, had more receiving touchdowns with 
eight than Odell Beckham has had in 23 games with the Browns in seven. Odell Beckham now has had his third major surgery in the last four years. He had ankle surgery, had groin surgery, and now he's got to have ACL surgery. He's going to be 29 years old on November 5th. And he's not going to get that youth back. You don't get faster as you get older. It's, it's much di- more difficult to come back from these types of injuries, and an ACL can be very, very tricky. I never rooted any ill will towards Odell Beckham. I always wanted him to succeed. I just didn't want him here. I thought he was a big distraction. I didn't think that the money was worth it. I thought that we needed to, like I said, put that money in other spots. Well, that's what Dave Gettleman did. He had a lot of balls to make that move. A lot of fans killed him. There's still a lot of Odell Beckham fans out there that want him to be a giant. Still a lot of Odell Beckham fans out there that hate Gettleman for that trade and will never forgive Gettleman for that trade. But look at what we got in return. We got Jabril Peppers. He's the heart and soul of the New York Giants defense. He's no doubt earned himself a second contract. The Giants have already picked up the fifth-year uh, option on Jabril Peppers, and he's going to be here. You know, I can't see the Giants not keeping him. He's a young safety. He's still right in his prime. And he's all over the field. He's the leader of that defense. He's really come on this year, and the defense is getting much better under his leadership. That piece alone to me (laughs) kind of made the trade even. You know, on top of that, we got a first-round pick. We got number 17 overall. We got Dexter Lawrence. Now, Dexter Lawrence isn't blowing you away with statistics, but if you watch his big guy every week, he's 342 pounds. He's about as athletic as they come. He gets pressure on the quarterback. He's great against the run, and he makes an incredible tandem, uh, you know, with uh, Leonard Williams. I mean, they're, they're an incredible team together. They also got O'Shane Zeminitz, who unfortunately is hurt, and he really hasn't lived up to his rookie season. He had four and a half sacks his rookie season. You were thinking he'd take the next step. He hasn't done that yet, so you really can't throw him into the mix. But not only that, guys, not only did they get Jabril Peppers and Dexter Lawrence for Odell Beckham, who's now having problems staying healthy and just not producing the way he did when he was younger, they also have cap space. And with that cap space, they were able to get guys like Blake Martinez and James Bradbury, who have taken this defense from, you know, one of the bottom 10 in the league to the top 10 in the league. So Odell Beckham's trade uh, was an absolute win for the New York Giants. Whether you didn't like the trade or not, whether you're an Odell Beckham fan or not, you have to sit back and look at what the Giants actually got for Odell Beckham. Because if you put it all together, you can say that they got Peppers, Lawrence, Zeminis, Bradbury, and Martinez. All for Odell Beckham. All for a guy that's headed towards 30, like I said, with his third major surgery in the last four seasons. And a guy that hasn't come close to producing what he did his first three seasons in the NFL. And like I said, Cleveland's in a better position. You know, he was all about Baker Mayfield and and Baker Mayfield's arm. And Baker Mayfield's a young guy coming into the prime of his career. He's had a good year this year. He was playing with his best friend in Jarvis Landry. You got Nick Chubb. You got a great offensive line. And he still wasn't putting up big numbers. And Cleveland seems like they've gotten better uh, since he went down. And that's not a knock on Odell Beckham. I'm just saying that they can win even without him. And the Giants, well, you know, they haven't lost any extra games without Odell Beckham. The Giants won that trade, no doubt about it. And like I said, I wish Odell Beckham a speedy recovery. I would like to see Odell Beckham, you know, produce. as if He's not playing us. We won't play Cleveland for another four years unless we meet in the Super Bowl. So the odds of him, you know, us playing against him in a Cleveland Browns uniform is unlikely. Um, but, you know, I just kind of wanted to put that out there and review the trade. This is a trade that I wanted to make years ago. And again, people killed me for it, but you know, I get killed for my hot takes. It's okay. It's just my opinion. People get mad at me for my opinion. When they don't like it, that's okay. We're all human. We, you know, we all have our emotions. Um, and a lot of guys are attached to players. They have their favorites, and, and I completely understand that. But I was glad that they made the trade. I was, surpri- I was surprised and not surprised at the same time. I just couldn't believe that our GM had the, had the cojones to pull that trade off. But uh, yeah, that trade definitely worked out in favor of the New York Giants. And I don't think that there's any doubt about it. I don't think there's any question about that. So that's all I got in this video, guys. Again, thank you so much for watching. Really do appreciate it. Hopefully I see you tonight at 10 o'clock. Again, the Dizzle and the Pizzle. And we'll see you then. It's Bad Dog and I'm out. Peace.